I'm Joe Devine and welcome to Whiteboard Football Extra. Today, the theme is nostalgia. Continuing on from last week, I'm speaking to Premier League photographer Mark Leach and committee member for the Capital Canaries, London Publican and my uncle, Damien Devine. I also spoke to the author of the new book, The Billionaires Club, James Montague. His interview will feature on next week's episode. Thanks for downloading and enjoy the podcast. Uh, I prefer prefer live football. I actually watch very little football on the telly. You know, a a live game Mm. all the way through. No, I I find that sometimes they kick off and you know how they're going to pass the ball and play. Every team. It's not like a Wimbledon or a Sheffield United launch it down the pitch against a team like Forest or try and play. Everyone plays the same football. Mm. And it's just like, I'll come in in 20 minutes. Yeah. Once you've done, I know what you're going to do yeah, the first 20, I'll come in then. It's almost like a basketball game. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Could just watch the last two minutes. <laughs> no, for me, it's about live football. Yeah. Being, being in the stadium, the atmosphere, the crowd. Yeah. Uh, and I probably enjoy away games more. Yeah. Which is a bit odd because it's a day out. Yeah. And you meet, you meet your mates and the gang and you don't know who you're going to bump into. So there's other stuff going on. Other, other stuff going game. on and you pick a pub and you have a few pints and it's very social. Yeah. That's one of the things we've talked about with other interviewees actually is the idea of football as a collective experience rather than an individual one. So rather than the way that I would normally watch football would be in my house, probably alone, watching it on the telly. It's a very, very different thing to how you might do it. Because even if you're, you know, you go to Norwich regularly... Even if you're not there with people that you know, you sort of know the people around you, and mm. even the strangers who are there, you're all sort of part yeah. of a collective group, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that opening game of the season away at Fulham, on the river, beautiful sunny day, uh, lovely Bishop's Park, mm. nice pub by the river, fantastic. Yeah. The yeah. football was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's the thing. So the point of these podcasts is to find out what role nostalgia plays in people's relationships with football and it's interesting one of the things you just said there is that part of your love of football is the stuff that surrounds the football isn't actually necessarily all the game so one of the ideas that that I've had is that maybe nostalgia also plays a role because most people develop a relationship with football when they're younger often through a parent or through friends something like that and their their external relationships inform the way that they feel about football maybe as an adult you remember that and that's part, that remains part of your relationship with football so the obvious first question to ask uh, Damien first of all what are your fondest memories of football and they can be from any time period they can be recently or when you were a child oh wow let me think about that one um, probably probably quite recent probably quite obvious in the uh, playoff final mm. um, and that wasn't just a game of football it was a long bank holiday weekend I mean it started on Friday you know, and it ended on Monday evening. Yeah. It was, uh, and some of that obviously is associated with the pub. And we had loads of silly events on. And, you know, we showed the uh, previous cup final, cup league win, you know, the video yeah. that's like 30 years old. And yeah. A lot of people hadn't even seen it. Yeah. Norwich fans, they'd watched the whole game for the first time. So we should mention as well that you own a pub and in London which has a sort of yeah. unofficial Norwich. Yeah, family. we're a sort of unofficial, um, you know, what, what I call it spiritual home of uh, any Norwich fan in London. Yeah. Uh, we've got a supporters club called the Capital Canaries, yeah. which is 42 years old. Yeah. So it's very well established. It's got about 250 members. Um, originally, it was based as a travel club yeah. to get people up and down at home games and away games, which, which it still does. But we have loads of other social events. Mm. Um, and that's interesting, actually, because you are, of the people I'm speaking to, you're the only person who doesn't directly work in, in an industry surrounding football. But in a way, uh, you do, because the pub obviously facilitates yeah, that. Yeah. What, football is part of, a part of your working environment. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's an important part of the business. I mean, the you know we've got Sky, Sky Sports and BT Sports, and and as you know, it's very very expensive because I'm in EC One, mm. and it's based on your rateable value, and the rates have all just gone up, and it's a very expensive thing to put into a pub. Yeah, and so you have to manage it as a business. Mm. Um, you've got to leverage the live games. I mean, fortunately, you know, being being in London, clearly we're, we're it's Arsenal territory, but. Uh, any London club that's on but also because it's it's so multicultural here I mean I will pot, I will get as many people in for Real Madrid um, Barcelona as I would for a, a Arsenal, Arsenal Man United yeah, yeah which is true. great yeah. which is great and so going back to, to, the, to the nostalgia thing 
Do you have any particular memories of when you were younger, or maybe a child or a teenager, that you reflect on and think they were, you know, special? My my childhood, because growing up in Harlow, where you had um, everyone supported a different London club. Yeah. And what I started doing was I'd go to West Ham, uh, whatever whoever they were playing, just because my mates were going. Yeah. And I'd go to Tottenham quite often, um, Arsenal not so often, whatever. But um, what I remember is just. Um, you know, to, to being scared, being being cautious, being careful, mm. and a couple of bad instances on on the trains coming home and bits and pieces. Yeah, would never tell mum and dad. I mean, I'm probably about thirteen, fourteen. Mm. And did that um, add to the thrill for you, or was it something that was just? It, add, it added to the fact that I didn't want to support London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went north. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate to say that, but it's a, it's a, it's a truthful answer to your question. If yeah. I think back to football when I was 12, 13, 14, it was going with my lads, it was keeping yourself to yourself, being cut, keeping your eyes open, yeah. don't put yourself in a risky situation. Yeah. And, it's and very I, different to the way you go now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, but I, still, I still won't wear white, white colours. Mm. Never. Yeah. No, not even a badge. Yeah. I just, you just don't know. You're asking for trouble. Well, you just don't know, yeah. Right? And who needs trouble? Yeah. Um, okay, that's interesting. I think that's kind of. I think. I think it's sad, but it's a personal preference. Mm. I mean, most of the capital canaries will go out in full, full shirts, irrespective of, of yeah. who your opposition is. Yeah. And fair play to them. Yeah. And enough. to be honest, travelling away, I've, I haven't seen much trouble really in the last ten years. Mm. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a good thing. And Mark, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. Your relationship with football is slightly different because you are a sports photographer, so you've been all around the world and you've met lots of players and seen lots more things than anyone really should in their in their lifetime. What are your fondest memories of football, given that there's an enormous archive to file through? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, probably not any chance meetings with you know some uh, footballers. I'm not going to bore people and say... You know, oh, me and Dennis Burkamp used to hang out together because it didn't happen. But I th- it's funny you're saying fond, and when Damien's talking about trouble, I'm thinking, why am I thinking fond memory of going up to watch Arsenal at Stoke, December the 30th, 1972? My friend didn't make it to Euston, went on a train with nobody I knew, nil nil draw in the fog, could hardly see anything, and the football special got bricked on the way home. <laughs> and it's almost like. It's it's you know my, why did my mind go there? I don't know. Mm. It's I think there was something, and I I don't wear a replica shirt. I bought one though, and it wasn't an Arsenal Cup final one. It was a yellow one with long sleeves with just a cannon with a number on the back. I chose number eight, no name, and I don't know what it was. It re- dawned on me later. It was when you saw Arsenal wearing that shirt, you'd been somewhere scary, yeah. and I saw them wear it at Forest. I saw him wear it at Stoke and at Upton Park. And all yeah. three times I got home and really happy to get into my own bed and alive. Yeah. But there was a buzz about it. I wanted yeah. to go again. And Did you feel at the time that there was a fondness? Or are you, is it you reflecting now back on I that? I think I'm thinking, reflecting. And now, I mean, I go past that Barclays Bank at Highbury Corner. And every time I look up, I'm looking to see... That's, I went on the Supporters Club coach to Nottingham mm. on Alan Ball's debut. I look up that road looking for that me on that bus. Mm. So that is obviously... Well, this is the theme, nostalgia, looking back. I don't remember coming back and telling everyone what a great time I had, no. Yeah. But I think fondness is probably you know, being in the front room with my family when England won the World Cup. And yeah. my dad, you had to keep quiet. Listen to the man, listen to the man. There was no... Talk. And Kenneth Walsnow was God. Hang on, his every word. And then my dad roared with laughter when Nobby Styles did his little dance, mm. and which you know came on the Three Lions song with Nobby dancing. And at that kind of, I had that on a cassette in 1996 when I was driving around the Euros. I think I was in Manchester. And you know, my dad's still alive. He's 92 years old. But I kind of felt teary eyed. I thought, hang on, I'm not thinking of my dad because he's gone. I was just thinking that moment in the front room with my dad and mm. uh, he actually picked me up when Jeff Hurst scored against Argentina swung me up by the feet and kicked the lampshade and I was kind of again 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 and my dad probably didn't realise what he'd done you know as if yeah. saying let's get back and listen to Kenneth Walson home now yeah. but you know the slightly off colour comments about wanting Rattan to leave the pitch <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know that was a time when you didn't get info coming in from everywhere but what I do remember this is this is with fondness was Waiting for Rattan to go off, and a score flash came up. Portugal nil, North Korea one. 
wow. Yeah. What's called nil, North Korea two? And he went up to three. Wow. And we're going, no, this is someone's and a prank at BBC. This can't be true. Yeah. And, you know, there's no other way of finding out. And then, obviously, Eusebio woke up and they won 5-3. But mm. that, was, that was odd because they were watching one game and another game, the info coming in. That was very rare. Yeah. A bit funky. but Of that, a particular that, time. That's well. a happy time, yeah. Well, you've touched on the next question as well because the, the next thing I've been asking people is about uh, the relationships that are formed around football, particularly when they're younger. You mentioned there that you were watching it with your dad, Damien. You said that part of your experience when you were younger is going with friends. Are there particular people who, uh, Damien, first that you, you remember enjoying football with and, and did those relationships inform how you felt about football? And as a sort of secondary question, if you're going with different people or sometimes the same people now that you were years ago, is, is there a different experience that you have? Well, what I, what I remember is when cup final day was a cup proper day. Yeah. And you would, um, round our street, there was one family that had a colour telly, mm. right? So everyone was invited. Yeah. And it was, and you, you went in at like, you know, three hours before the cook kickoff. Yeah. Um, and there was tea and stuff like that. And generally, always remember that it was good weather, you know, in May, um, perhaps hanging out in the garden. And then you'd have 16, 18, 20 people in one living room. Yeah. Kids sat down at the front. Adults at the back, yeah, watching, and it's probably you know, and half of it was like the, the, the joy of watching color telly, mm. it's, it's unbelievable, yeah, and trying and always going back trying to manufacture a conversation with my dad to see if he could get one, yeah. which eventually worked, yeah, probably about four or five years. We rented one from Rediffusion, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably a significant cost, <laughs> but because it wasn't, wasn't much football on telly, yeah, it was like one game, a, what two games a week, mm. no? one game a. Well, it's nothing like the match no. of the day, and match of the day would go up to Coventry versus Southampton. It was nil nil, yeah, but you still wouldn't say, "I won't bother watching it." You still, yeah. 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 well, that's interesting. You say that there was it was a proper day, and you watch it with the big. It was a people. proper family day. You still kind of get that now with the pub, I suppose, for, we, for you personally. Try and recreate it in the pub, in the but way. it's certainly not in um, you know certainly not at home. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I get, obviously a lot of people. You know, if you're in, into football, you'll make a point of watching the cup final and watch it with your family or friends, but. Um, there's not so much passion or community around it that it used to be. So, Mark, you mentioned that you watched football with your dad. Was he was he a big fan, and, and was your relationship with him, you know, strengthened through football? Yeah, my, my brother was a fan, but my brother had other into it. My dad took us the first match. I was coming up to my eighth birthday, and it was 1964. And we went to Tottenham versus West Bromwich Albion, and we came up the steps. And I don't know why. It's not like we lived in concrete urban jungle, but there was just this green. I couldn't take it all in, the green of the pitch. West Brom came out, Tottenham white and blue, a bit dull, West Brom white and blue. Then they turned around, they had these big boxes with red numbers on the back. And I think they only wore red socks for some reason. It was just, just, I'd never seen anything like it. And my dad looked to me to say something, and I was glazed over mm. and I think my brother was coming back oh what train am I going to get back and he's Doctor Who on telly tonight and me when we going again when we going again <laughs> and he came in he told me this recently he said to my mum lost him he's gone football he's mm. gone and do one, you still watch games with your dad now? I watched the last time I did I recreated I didn't go I usually shoot the cup final I didn't go down to Cardiff when West Ham played uh, Liverpool Yeah, and I watched it I, I can't, couldn't even hazard a guess at the year and that was the first it was good to go back and watch the cup final and it was a cracking game as well yeah and uh, yeah, still had to have silence whoever the commentator was they're still not allowed to talk during it yeah but we weren't like Damien saying a big family gathering of the clans it was more you know my brother my mum would sit there and watch it because there might be something in the royal box or uh, some, there was something there and uh, I can remember my mum and dad must have gone out it was a Thursday night Liverpool played Bruce Munch and Gladbach uh, no, Borussia Dortmund in the Cutler's Cup final. And my nan said, who are they? Who are they? Dortmund. Where are they from? Germany. Oh, my God. And she was supporting Liverpool. <laughs> and just the the war all came back. And me and my brother were watching me nan watching the match more. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Into extra time. We watched the whole thing. But I think going to that match was just, yeah, something changed in me. But, what, look, you know, you're saying this nostalgia. You obviously don't get it at the time. Looking back, yeah. I bought the first six Beatles albums. I was mad on the Beatles and 
when England won the World Cup, I didn't buy another record for about five years because yeah. you know didn't have the money for football and music. And mm. It was football, like Damien was saying, going to West Ham. I kind of went to with a friend's big brother, West Ham v Leicester, because you could see uh, Hurst, Moore, Peters, and Banks, mm. and he got there late, like minutes before kick off, and he put. He's my mate on his shoulders, and I had to see what I could. And I think yeah. I saw the back of Gordon Banks at one point. I wasn't sure. It was, you know, mm. but I just thought that'll do me. They were there somewhere. That's funny. Someone else, uh, James Montague, who I interviewed as well, talked about very similar experience of having to, on the North Bank at, at West Ham, having to look through people to see what was happening on the pitch, and that was a visceral memory. For well, him. I've, I've, when I've looked at some recent. Um, Arsenal matches on, you know, there's match of the day things on YouTube, and I remember the goals that were scored at the clock end. I used to stand on the North Bank there. The ones scored at the North Bank when I was young, I couldn't see down there. Yeah. The near goal, you could see the far goal, and I thought, oh, that's how he scored it. Was it, you know, like all these years <laughs> later? It wasn't on, you know, you didn't catch it on TV. It was, um, but, you know, that was, yeah, there were those steps, but watching it on TV was the, obviously the first memory. I can remember 64. Howard Kendall, you know, and everyone was upset. Oh, poor lad, he's lost. He's only 17. And when you're six, you go, only 17? He's yeah. an old man. You know, yeah. it's like miles away, 17. Yeah. But there was, they had to find a public interest. I think one of the things I remember most cup final was, was his name Kavanagh, the guy who ran on the pitch? Mm. Everton, Sheffield Wednesday, give the police the slip, slipped his jacket off. Right. When Everton scored, that was... That's when your mum gets involved in the match, then starts <laughs> laughing. Yeah, and my dad's probably saying, "Bring back the birch." At that point, you know, <laughs> but my mum was thinking that was a bit of entertainment, so yeah. it was something for everyone. Who knows? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, this brings me on to my next question. I think it's probably what I was going to ask is if you both still like football. I think it's more apt to say, "Do you like it in a slightly different way?" Because you both talked about that, you know, sense of. A, football being a collective experience who you were watching it with there was much more community involved when you were younger and I think it's fair to say it's quite different now do, if you know it sounds like you both still like football do you can you appreciate that maybe you like it in a different way mm. well I think as I said before I prefer live football yeah I watch very little on telly yeah Not, you know fleetingly if it's on there's very few games that I'll say, right, I'm going to sit down and watch this for 90 minutes. And is that maybe because the live experience being surrounded by people is more reminiscent of what it used to be like? But yeah, I think so. Yeah. And also there's too much football on TV now. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's the, it's the live experience. Yeah. Uh, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so um, that's why I hang on to my season ticket. <laughs> yeah. And Mark, what about you? I, I think I kid myself that I've fed up and I've outgrown football and then a game comes on TV and you kind of see somebody do something a bit shit house, and you want the other team to win mm. and it can be you know mid-table League 2 yeah. I, I did, I've done that too often but I went had a bit of a summer off really and I went to Barnet versus Swansea pre-season friendly and enjoyed myself too much over there and then this Emirates Cup was on which is something I've avoided with holidays and I thought oh Lacazette signed for Arsenal I'll get something on him get there it's lashing down with rain during Red Bull versus Benfica mm. or no Red Bull versus Seville and I'm getting soaked to the skin I realise Arsenal warming up they're going to wear the wrong kit and Lacazette is on the bench yeah. I'm thinking this is it's time to stop it's time to stop <laughs> then you start seeing a few of these Seville got these Argentinian guys yeah. and just the way they were working the ref working winding the Red Bull players up just I thought, oh, I, sh- I should be protesting about this behaviour, but something I love. Maybe it's, my, hey, hey, we're getting there now. Maybe my dad's reaction to Rattan. Mm. Maybe I'm thinking, I'm against my dad here. I like <laughs> the Argentinian and their gamesmanship, we call it. I mean, <laughs> shithousery now, probably. And I was enjoying it too much. And I, I probably still, still got the cold from yeah. four hours in the rain. And I thought, you know, I'm kidding myself that I pack in. But yeah. what Damien's saying about not liking the live football the commentators the yeah. other night the Super Cup was on Man United Real Madrid I yeah. found myself watching a bit of that and Ronaldo was on the bench yeah. so forget him he's on the bench yeah. no problem. and all the commentators tried to weave him into every conversation yeah, as if yeah. to say I'm commentating and I'm saying Ronaldo mm. no, tell me I don't know who that guy has got the ball I don't know who that guy is please tell me who's yeah. got the ball now that's all I want to know because yeah. I went to a great South American place up on Holloway Road and 
I was doing some pictures outside Arsenal Swansea and I had to go back afterwards. I wasn't covering the match. It was on South American TV, yeah. Arsenal v Swansea. And all the commentator was saying was the names of the players. Mm. He wasn't talking about... Perfect. Yeah. And I thought, why don't they just go back to that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, my final question was to ask again what you feel the role of, of Nostalgia in your relationship with football is. It sounds, from your description there, of being at the Emirates Cup of a day where not much is happening and you're lacking interest and questioning why you're there. And then you find something to, to watch which is reminiscent of something you enjoyed about football from the past. I mean, to me, that sounds like yeah, yeah. Nostalgia does play uh, and, a role. You know, it's not till I've been laying on this couch here at 50 guineas an hour with you I've realised that connection so it's been a positive thing we should also say though that as a photographer uh, and you know offside sports photography who you manage uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, archives of uh, particular photographer Jerry Cranham yourself you have a lot of photographs from the past your work in some ways is in the past you look at the past all day I do and you think it's a dangerous thing to do but if I'm actually bring those pictures alive we're making sales it's a good thing but this is this is no word of a lie I went to Jerry Cranham's house to look through his collection a big pile of football transparencies in clear sheets of 24 on a sheet and he said oh they're a bit of a mess I haven't got all the dates and captions I reckon I got to the third sheet Tottenham West Bromwich Albion 1964 mm. and there it was and I said I'll tell you the date on this one Jerry and he you know, he said, I think you better have this lot. You know, and I was just, it was, you know, I, I don't like that. It was meant to be moments. But wow, yeah. when I started looking through those, I thought, I remember those big boxes with the red numbers in there. Yeah. And Jimmy Greaves scored his 100th league goal for Tottenham. And it was a handshake. Mm. <laughs> As he jogged back. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing I can't stand now. I, lo- I love when celebrations go wrong. That's the thing in modern football. When, <laughs> I can't think his name. The German scored. When we beat Germany 5 1 in Munich, and the guy did his big Bruce Forsyth celebration. Yeah. I yeah. want a picture of that. Well, <laughs> Peter Crouch as well. Yeah. But the, just to celebrate yeah. the goal in early, you 1 0 up, you lose the game 5 1. Yeah. Mean, he'll do it again the next match, I'm sure. But mm. that's something else. That's, a, that's for another time. My pet hates <laughs> goal celebrations. And managers will come on saying, you're always at your most prone after you've scored yourself. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe you don't spend two minutes celebrating a goal with the thing you've choreographed all week. Maybe, maybe you'll be a bit more switched on to defend. But hey, what do I know? Well, it sounds like quite a lot. Damien, um, I want to ask you a slightly different question. Uh, with you, to me, it seems a lot like there's uh, the community sense there involved in football. Were that to be gone, if you weren't able to attend live football you know, every other week or, or whatever, and if you were, your relationship with it was reduced to watching it on the telly, do you think you would? Do you think your relationship with it would stay the same? Would you think your interest would still be peaked? Well, it would, wouldn't it? I still watch football. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a poor it'll be a poor substitute. Yeah, a poor second. Yeah, I'd and say. would you do that out of habit or out of? Well, if, if for whatever reason, you know, I wasn't able to, to attend football, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd clearly watch more than the telly. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. It wouldn't be the same experience. No. Yeah. No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. And as you know, I mean, like the, the, the home games, it's, it's quite a family thing up mm. in Carrow Road. And um, it's time to catch up. Yeah. And generally go along during the course of the season with various different members of the family, right? Yeah. It's great. It's Myself great included. Out. Yourself included. <laughs> when am I coming next? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we'll have to make a date. Let's look at the fixtures, put something in. Yeah. And uh, and why not? All right, Damien, Mark, thanks very much, guys. Lovely to speak to you. Likewise. Likewise. Thank yeah. you very much.